One character that doesn't get enough attention in this franchise is unquestionably Dr. Henry Wu, the geneticist that literally brought Jurassic Park to life. Wu has of course appeared in three of the films within the series so far, and is slated to make his final appearance in the next Jurassic World movie. In preparation for his character's conclusion, I thought it'd be a good idea to examine his story as told within the pages of the very first novel. This is going to take more than just a single video to get it just right, so I've opted to split Henry's history up into three parts, the first of which happens to be the origins of Dr. Wu. A very long time ago, John Hammond had a dream. His eyes set on an elaborate dinosaur theme park that would bring tourists from all over the world to see these ancient, beautiful creatures. Hammond shared this vision with geneticist Norman Atherton, a man who helped develop what John needed in order to make his Jurassic Park a reality. Unfortunately, Norman would soon become ill with cancer, prompting Hammond to seek help in his park's completion elsewhere. Enter Henry Wu, a 28-year-old graduate student who was currently getting his doctorate at Stanford. It was here that Henry built his relationship with Norman Atherton and subsequently, Hammond himself. After being highly recommended by Norman, Hammond took Henry on as his lead geneticist and gave him 10 million a year in funding. Over the next five years, they cloned the dinosaurs that would populate that incredible tourist attraction. And on one fateful day, Wu would receive visitors, a group of individuals who were coming to inspect Jurassic Park and see if it was safe. It was time for the world to see Wu's work. After entering the raptor nursery, Wu began to show off his newest creation. He proudly introduced the creature as Velociraptor mongoliensis, before showing Tim how docile the animal was at just six weeks of age. Grant was fascinated by the animal, and told the doctor that he'd just recently excavated a Velociraptor anteropus specimen. After viewing the animal, Wu thought it a great time to elaborate on his research. He told all of his guests that all of the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park were female thanks to his genetic chromosome control. There would be no authorized breeding in the park. Malcolm, of course, was rather skeptical of such a claim, and began to ask just how many species they had cloned on the island. Wu said that he wasn't exactly sure, but he thought that they'd built their way up to 15. This astonished Ian Malcolm. You don't know for sure, Malcolm pressed? This actually makes Wu smile. I stopped counting after the first dozen, he explained. Not every genetic code works out. Sometimes, they had to go back to the drawing board on these animals, and at one point, he thought they'd had 20 species. This conversation would eventually lead to another discussion on Wu's work. Ellie asked Wu what exactly he meant when he said sometimes they had to go back to the drawing board. He'd mentioned that sometimes they wouldn't know the animal was flawed until it had grown a bit. Now, Alan Grant would chime in as well, asking Wu how exactly he knew for certain whether an animal was developing correctly or not. And again, Henry answered the question with a smile. I'd often thought of that, he replied before elaborating that he was interested in what a paleontologist would think about his work. Dr. Sattler explained herself, questioning why Wu called the raptor mongoliensis specifically, and the doctor remarked that he called it that because that's what the raptor species was called in China, where they'd gotten that amber. Dr. Grant found this interesting. As he'd mentioned before, he just dug up a Velociraptor anteropus, a creature that had once been labeled Deinonychus, but was now classified with the name Velociraptor as well. He asked to see Jurassic Park's full-size raptors for comparison's sake, and so the group left Dr. Wu to continue with his work. Unknowing that he was just about to make his way to John Hammond, he needed to discuss the next iteration of Jurassic Park with the man that had been funding his work. It's time they integrated more serious changes into the animal's DNA. Michael Crichton's novel establishes Henry Wu as a very proud geneticist early on in the story. This is something that we can see on display across all three films that he's currently made appearances in. Most interesting of which happens to be Jurassic World, where Wu can be seen having a similar discussion to the one that he's about to give Hammond at the point in the story where we've left off. There's a certain level of overconfidence in his character that I can't honestly say that I blame him for. Hammond plucked the graduate student from his doctorate program at a pretty young age, before giving him millions of dollars to recreate living dinosaurs. His high perception of himself makes sense, and it's something that has recently become a serious part of the Jurassic World trilogy. And yes, if they continue the books the way they have, I do know where it's gonna end. Next time we talk about Henry Wu's character will be on the chapter titled version 4.4. And trust me, it's a pretty important part of the story. Now, before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Words can't really express how awesome it is to have you guys tell me how much you enjoy the stuff that I do, and I seriously am eternally grateful for every ounce of support that you've shown me. It honestly means the world. 
Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.